<laughs> Quite for no reason. I'm here for the season and high as a kite. Living in error with Maud at Cap Ferra, which couldn't be right. Everyone's here and rightly gay. Nobody cares what people say. Though the Riviera seems really much queerer than Rome at its height. Yesterday night, I've been, <clears throat> I've been to a marvelous party with Nunu and Nada and Nell. <clears throat> it was in the fresh air, and we went as we were, and we stayed as we were, which was hell. Oh, great, oh, great, that is Excitement was bound to begin when Laura got blind on Duponi and Gin and scratched over here with a Cartier pin. I couldn't have liked it more. I've been, I've been to a marvelous party. Quite good tonight. I, I almost finished. How about if I give them a Nazi marching song for the last house? You just played your last house. So you finally taught him a trick, did you? You know the old saying, no, Jukovic. If you have a Hungarian dog trainer for a friend, you don't need a dog. Go on, get off. Come on. All right. Here you are. Finish it up, I can't take it with me. Not another royal command, surely. Maybe Mother's died. Hargreaves? Who the hell is Hargreaves? Monte Carlo? I'd better blame Forest Lawn. Not since Garbo. This would be the passport photo to end them all. You sort of came and, well, went. Don't think about it. Just concentrate. Come over here and sit down, huh? You come here and sit. I guess it's the excitement and all. You getting the telegram and flying to France and... Oh, it won't look so good. My hair's all messed up. I'm not taking your picture. I'm taking my picture. Oh, yeah, that's right. Now, let me check everything here. Oh, that... All right, you want to come over here now, dear? Do you think I'll ever make a photographer, Mr. Dunbar? I think you'll make lots of photographers now. Yeah, grab this. Now, when I say go, not before, when I say go, press the tip. Maybe Pan Am will let me go half fair. I look so young. I pressed it. You what? I heard you say go. And you pressed it. All right. Relax. No sweat. <laughs> now, don't do anything until I snap my fingers. And just let me get the right expression. You look just darling. Here's looking at you, kid. Terrific. When I get back, I'll tell you how I liberated Paris. I was in the war, you know. You know, the British may have fought them on the beaches, but I liberated them where it mattered, in the boudoir. Good luck. Be careful of that while you're driving. Yeah. Might get some of it in your mouth.
Yes, I'm fine. Sure glad I got here in time for the food festival. I know. Uh, yes, Mr. Parkland, a suite has been reserved in the modern annex, which I hope will be to your liking, sir. Is your friend with you? No, I'm alone. Le Bon lives in hopes of all. Excuse me. Don't I know you from someplace? Oh, it's quite possible. Could you do something for me? Uh, just put your hand over your mustache. Do what? Just give me the face without the cookie duster. I'm sorry, I'm trying to sign in here. I know, I know you. It's just that the lip fuzz is throwing me. Okay, this way, sir. Now, let me see that. I was right. I knew I knew you. I never forget a face, and I certainly wouldn't forget yours. I mean, nobody forgets disasters. You're Nick Carlin, right? Now, say you don't remember me. That's right, I don't. Look, I'm Charlie. Charlie Dunbar. You remember Charlie, you ruined his life. Can't get over it. It's all coming back, right, Nick? Yes, of course. How are you, Charlie? Never better, you don't? Oh, ticking over. Ticking over? How pretty skin you get. <laughs> After all we went through together, now we meet up like this. I never married, how about you? Yes. See, we used to share the same uh, girlfriend in Paris. This is the man who stole my then future wife. Boy, did I hate you. Yes, well, this is my floor. Hey, mine too. You got married, you say? Yes, three times. Children? No, grown women every time. You ever think of Janine? Hmm? Oh, Janine. Yes, of course. Some memories, huh? Oh, I had a maid with her until you came along. <laughs> Still no hard feelings. Pure acid, aged in the wood. How long you stay? Depends. That's what I remember about you, Nick. Always cagey. Always played it very close to the best. Thank you, Mr. Cartland. See you later, Nick. Mm. Thank you. You got a nice place here. How did you get in here? This happens to be my suite. Well, it's mine too. I just came from the bathroom. Now, just a minute. There's something very odd going on here. Wait a minute. Hello? Yes? Yes, we're both here. Right, fine, Mr. Hargreaves. Did I hear you say Hargreaves? Yes. Do you know him? No. But he sent me this. You've got one too, huh? Yeah. And an airline ticket. First class, New York to Nice, round trip. Asking you to be here today to learn something to your advantage? That's right. So it's not just by chance we met up again. Well, it doesn't look like it. What could I possibly learn to my advantage that would include you? Mr. Dunbar? No, I'm Nick Carton. I do beg your pardon. Only one out. I'm Hargreaves. Right. You're going to need that. And I need to find the John. May I? Uh, uh, you and Charlie. Thank you. I've come to talk to you about the Countess of Savignon. Can, can you believe it? We sat on the runway at Heathrow for two hours before the thing took off. Can you believe that? Mm. Or Janine O'Bray. I should have said that. Does that ring a bell? Mm. I'll leave you with that. Did he say Janine? Yes, I think so. What was all that about a countess? I have no idea.
man of varied taste, obviously. I know I shouldn't have come. I know it. I had a premonition. Oh, the old case. One traveled by sea, you know, queuing for the John on Cunard. Do you know they serve that in plastic cups? I bought it because there's nothing like a bottle of bolly to jolly these occasions along, and it was Janine's favorite tipple, as of course you both know. Was? Did you say was? Yes, was. And I put that in the telegrams. Oh, I see, that's typical of me these days. The old grey matter's getting a bit foggy. Uh, Mr. Hargreaves, are you sure you got the right two guys? Who? I think my friend is asking if perhaps there's been some terrible mistake. Yes, well... I think most things in life are a mistake, really. I mean, I was never really at home in the law. Isn't it funny how aeroplanes make your feet swell? I mean, we are talking about the same Janine. Uh, yes. Yes. I haven't slipped up that. And you're telling us she's dead. Sad to say. In a word, yes. Mr. Hargreaves. Yes, sir. Are we to take it that the reason we're all together is because Janine has remembered us in some way? Absolutely. How about that? Of course, I always knew she'd never forget me. Um, what about her husband? Is he, um, still with us? Oh, no, no, no. The old Count fell off the perch some time ago. Funny fella, much older than her, and very French. Which, of course, he would be, since he was. And very well healed. He left her quite a pile. Oh, well, what uh, sort of pile? His piles go quite a biggie. How biggie? to say, really. Well, not that, um, not that we want to probe, but, um, well, estimations are, it'll round out somewhere in the region of 400 million francs. Give or take the odd minute. <gasps> Poor sweetheart. What a shame she didn't live to enjoy it. Oh, I don't think she ever went short of loose change. What gives? I... Might we ask how she died? Accident at sea. What? Accident at sea. <sighs> she drowned. Oh, my God, don't tell me. Actually, her death was a bit of a mystery. Apparently, her aqualung went on the blink when she was... Think of a jig. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, scuba diving. Scuba diving? A woman of 60? 54, actually. Mind you, she kept herself in remarkable shape. Splendid body. <sighs> Too bad they never found it. Well, as you can imagine, I didn't get you here for nothing. So, um, I'll let her tell you herself. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Are we going to have a seance? Somewhat unorthodox, I'm afraid, but there it is. Right now. Pause, cue, review, rook, rook. These things terrify me. They terrify me. Right. Well, that's not her. It's just the wrong side. Had a lot of figure as a client once. Wonderful. Right. Now then, let's see how we're placed. Cross your fingers, gentlemen. Just cross your fingers. And play. You sure you got it switched on, Bertie, darling? So where do I speak into this? Right, well, here we go. <clears throat> darling Charlie, darling Nick, this is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done in my life. Here I am in perfect health, reading my last will and instructions, because dear, stuffy old Bertie insists. Who is dear, stuffy old Bertie? Me, as a matter of fact. Oh, sorry. Still, words on paper are so impersonal, and after all, once upon a time, we were all on intimate terms. Thanks to clever old Bertie, I managed to find out that you're both alive and kicking. So before we turn up our toes, I thought I ought to make a confession. My big problem was I could never choose between you. It was just my luck to fall for two desperately attractive men at the same time, and you were both so sexy in your uniforms. However, when our menage a trois broke up and the war forced us all to go our separate ways, you left me with a little problem because the trois became cat. Uh, hold it! What's she talking about? What's that mean? I think she found herself with one of the oven, as the saying goes. Knocked up in your glorious language. Over that little hurdle, are we? Right, on to the next. At the time, I couldn't trace either of you, so I took the easy way out and married dear Andre, who had many good qualities. 
Not the least of which was the fact that he was stinking rich and terribly understanding. It's just as well because the child I was carrying as we walked to the altar couldn't have belonged to him. It could only have belonged to one of you. I, we had a girl, my only child, and I loved her very much, but sadly, she's no longer with us. Wait, wait a minute. Hit that button. This is all going too fast for me. Is, is she saying what I think she's saying? She had a child, maybe his, maybe mine. Now the child's dead? Unfortunately, yes. Caroline, that was her name, and her husband. They were both killed in a car crash some five years ago. Now, wait a minute. Hold, hold, hold it. You're doing it again. Don't go so fast. Husband? It gets worse. Now I've lost a son-in-law. You've lost a one Two seconds ago, I might have had a whole family. Now they're wiped out. Charlie, control yourself. Is there more? Don't tell me there's more. As a matter of fact, there is. After Caroline's death, I only had one consolation. Her little daughter, Bridget. Or perhaps I have to say, our granddaughter, Bridget. Holy smoke. The only real legacy I have to leave. Is she your granddaughter, Charlie? Or you're a snick? I don't know. So I'm asking you both to accept her. I can't make the choice between you now any more than I could all those years ago. It's an unfair burden, I know, but I don't have any other answer. Ultimately, Bridget will decide between you which of you she wants to be her guardian. I hope she has better luck choosing than I did. So have this one on me, boys, for old time's sake. And whatever else you do, have fun. Well, there you have it, gentlemen. No legal obligation to both of you, of course. I have to point that out. Merely a moral commitment, I suppose. Any chance for massage? How old is Bridget? Coming up to ten next birthday. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm inheriting a ten-year-old child. Could well be. In order that you could both get better acquainted with the child, the Countess left provision. Not that money would ever influence your decisions. No, of course not. She just instructed me to offer a token sum to compensate you both for disrupting your careers while you spend summer on the yacht with the child. Summer on the yacht? Or in the villa, as you will. Or in the villa. Yeah, well, I'm sure you both need more time. As you say, money is not the prime importance, although you are both entitled to $50,000 in any event, and whoever the child chooses will receive an annual income of a quarter of a million for life. <coughs> are you still with us, Charlie? Oh, yeah. Yes, I, as you say, we, we definitely do need more time. Good. Well, I look forward to hearing from you both. I suppose you realize if we pooled our knowledge of ten-year-old girls, we could write it all on the head of a pin. I worked it all out last night. Most inconsiderate of Janine. What's the happen during that last week in Versailles? Why didn't she just leave us the money? I mean, that was the only time we met head on. What are you mumbling about? Versailles. That's X marks the spot. You were there about ready to move in. I got a furlough, and then fortunately you got transferred. And I took over. Is that meant to be proof or something? Well, it proves I was last. So? Well, neither one of us saw her after that. So? Huh. So the odds are on me. Oh, sure. Now, let's not get too clinical about such a delicate subject, but quite obviously you haven't the faintest conception of the process of human reproduction. Last, Charlie, is not necessarily best. Lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Oh, listen to who's talking. I mean, a three-time Waller boy who never came up with another little Nicky. I mean, in your case, lightning never struck once. I find that very offensive. What? I find that very offensive. Good, it was meant to be. Hey, I just thought of something. Well, you might have knocked. Well, I didn't know you were trying out for Granny of the Year. Get anything out of that book? Yes, and it's absolutely terrifying. Listen to this. A couple should not wait until they're too old to adopt a child. Some of them become too set in their ways. They've dreamed so long of a little girl with golden curls filling the house with song that even the best of children turn out to be a rude shock. Charlie, there are things in this book that read like a manual for space travel. I believe you. I've often dreamed of a blonde filling the house with song, but she was never 10 years old. We've got to make our minds up one way or the other. Tonight's the deadline, the child arrives tomorrow. Let's face it, Nick. We're both in the twilight of our years. What do we need with the love of a small child? 
Still, I think we gave it our best shot. You know, Janine had no right to saddle us with this proposition. It's very inconsiderate. Very. Well, let's settle then. We'll both turn it down. Yeah, you're right, Charlie. We both turn it down. You know, some guys would have taken advantage of the situation. It's a lucky thing we're men of honor. Well, it's good seeing you again, Nick, old buddy. Likewise, my dear old chum, old pal. Have a good ride back home. Thank you. Good night, Nick. Good night. Turn the ladder, will you, when you get out there? Good night. Am is flying out of here now, huh? You should talk. I knew I was right not to trust you. So much for honor. From now on, it's every man for himself. Where's Louis? Look, hold this a moment, will you? It's a very neurotic Stilton cheese. It's liable to walk off the platform on its own. Um. It's a friend of yours, Bridget. Get away. Get away from her. She doesn't accept gifts from strangers. But I'm not a stranger, lady. I'm probably your grandfather. You pervert. Get away or I'll call the police. Come along, sir. Men like you should be castrated. Bridget? Are you Bridget? <laughs> oh, funny man, you gave me a cheese. <laughs> it's all right, Bridget. I found him. It's in the second carriage along. All right? Oh, thank you so much. I do hope I didn't inconvenience you. Uh, are you traveling with Bridget? Oh, yes. Are you one of the gentlemen we're expecting? I'm Nick Carton. Oh. I'm Charlie Dunbar. Oh. What am I speaking to? Oh, well, most, most people call me Anderson. Have you said hello, Bridget? She said hello to me. Ah, oh, she's going to have the pleasure of meeting me. I'm Grandpa Charlie, Bridget. And you can always tell the difference between us because I'm the good-looking one. Look what I've got here. You like teddy bears? No, thank you. You don't? Of course they do, Charlie. Young ladies like dolls. Everybody knows that. I don't like dolls either, thank you. You don't like dolls? Well, this is a special doll. She's got a creepy face. One thing you'll learn about Bridget, she always tells it like it is. Mind you, I don't blame her. Those two would scare me. Where did you get them? In a shooting gallery? Oh, right, we'd better go before this cheese goes into orbit. I'll let you in on a secret, though. If you travel with one of these, you always get a carriage to yourself. Come on. Charlie? What? I have the impression we're going to earn our money. Every penny. I wonder if we can get a trade in on these. Wrong cabin. I, I was looking for dear little Bridget. Oh, well, dear little Bridget's having a rest before her swim. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, um, could I have a word with you? Oh, oh yes. Please, come in. Uh, 
Excuse the mess. I'm, I'm trying to unpack. Yes. Well, there's quite a yacht. Yes. Yes, the Countess never believed in taking it with her. <laughs> Why don't you sit down? Well, thank you, my dear. That sounds like the woman I love. Mm. Look, um, I'm sure that somebody must have explained this rather bizarre situation to you. Yes, Mr. Hargreaves told me the score, but oh, don't let me inhibit you. Well, I was just thinking that as... Uh, no, no, thank you. As you must know, Bridget, better than anybody else alive, I, I thought maybe you could give me a few hints. Hints? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, what, what sort of hints? Could you pass me the ashtray? Oh, yes, of course. Well, um, I don't know how to, how to handle a young girl, what she likes to do and talk about, and that sort of thing. She seems like such a sweet little child. <laughs> well, no, no. No? Well, sweet isn't the first word that jumps into my mind. I, I can give you some others. Cunning, predatory, stubborn, perverse, irritating, maddening. Just, just how much experience with children have you had, Mr. Cartland? Well, the minimum, let's say. I thought so. <laughs> you poor souls. You see, I... Well, I've looked after children all my life. Now, do I remind you of Mary Poppins? No, I wouldn't say so. That spoonful of sugar put my profession back 50 years. Oh, it's uh, not that I want to exaggerate. Bridget is a perfectly normal little girl. That is as normal as any 10-year-old can be who's been brought up by an eccentric grandmother with more money than brains. Sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Oh, no, please, go ahead. No, no, I, I, I really shouldn't. It's, it's not my place. And you've got problems enough. It, it, it's just that for 20 years, I've, I've looked after a succession of Bridget's, Malcolm's, Johnny's, Angela's, you're all on loan, as it were. And the only reason I'm not entirely gaga is that I not only travel with the Stilton cheese, I also slug myself to sleep every night with a hefty shot of Jack Daniels. <laughs> Actually, I was introduced to that lifesaver by a ten-year-old dipsomaniac who sent both his parents through prolonged analysis, but not yours truly. And actually, I've got a built-in survival kit. <laughs> Look, Bridget, all stick the knife between your shoulder blades and grate it on the bone, given half a chance. They'll also charm you, reduce you to tears, make you laugh, twist you around their little pinkies, give you near heart attacks. It's all just par for the course, you see. I, 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 I can't give you any hints, Mr. Cartland. I can only give you sympathy. And a Jack Daniels, maybe. Oh, that would be very acceptable. It's the first time I've ever eaten facing the sea. I usually face a wall. Delicious veal. Yes, yes, actually, the chef does do it very well. Mind you, good, too. You have to fuss on. I do? That's even better. Can't you see the resemblance, Charlie? Resemblance to what? Janine, dummy. Look at that divine little face. Can't you just see Janine? Oh, yeah, definitely. Darling, every time I look at you, I'm reminded of those golden days I spent with your dear grandmother. What's for my song? Fish. Oh, my God, I'm allergic to fish. I'm talking about Janine, do you mind? Are you going to interrupt through the entire meal? If you don't like it, don't eat it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cartland. You have now destroyed three years' discipline. Yeah, would you mind your own business, Nick? Did you fight over Grandma like this? Do what, darling? Fight? No, no, no. Oh, yes, we did. Well, we didn't actually fight. We just had um, differences. I wanted to fight you once, and you chickened out. I chickened out? You chickened out. You live in a dream world, you... Oh, this is wonderful stuff, gentlemen. Just keep this up and I'm out of a job. I'd like men to fight over me. I'll make them very jealous and they'll kill each other for love. I'm sure, but before you reach that happy state, would you just finish your greens? How can you be so awful, Anson? I'm talking about love and all you can think about is yucky things like greens. Well, that's life, Bridget. It's seldom a bowl of cherries. Most of the time, it's strained spinach. But I want them to tell me about Grandmama and how they loved her desperately. Did you all used to sleep together? See what I mean? Give her an inch. Well, did you? What's that, sweetheart? Make passionate love to her. I, I just don't know where it all comes from. Children grow up fast these days. Don't talk about me as if I wasn't here. This is my boat and I can say what I like. You want to bet? This is not your boat until you're 21. So you've got a choice. You can either behave nicely for the next 11 years until men find you irresistible, or you can eat on your own. I could fire you, Anderson. Is that a threat, Bridget? You're slipping. 
Don't let this put you off, children, gentlemen. There's plenty more where that came from. Well, I suppose the first night out is bound to be a little strange. Yeah, for all of us. I shall run away before I'm 21 and live just like Grandmama did. Bridget. Grandmama used to say, eat, drink and be merry. Bridget, as your grandmother also used to say, will you stop being a real pain? Now, I have made every allowance for you. I take it as a compliment that you don't like me. And I am sorry that your grandmother is no longer with us to give you your own way. And I'm sure that meeting these two very nice gentlemen for the first time has not been easy for you. You're overexcited and you're overtired and very shortly you are going to bed. It's not time yet and they're not nice. They're old and creaky like you. All right, Bridget, you just blow it. Come on, Ben. No, no arguments. You. Just say good night. Say good night, please. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bridget. I am sorry about this, gentlemen. We'll see you in the morning when we have our happy face on. I don't want to go Come to on, bed. Bridget, for goodness sake. Are they all like that? Charlie, I don't believe that Rebecca ever lived on Sunnybrook Farm. That's a myth invented by women. Hello. Are you and me the only early risers? What's his name? He's a she. Oh, I beg your pardon. What's her name? Albert. I knew I shouldn't have asked. Well, what are we going to do today? What does Anderson let you do? Nothing. Oh, well, I'm sure we can improve on that. Hey, how about you and me sneaking off before anybody else is up and going into town? How does that grab you? I think Albert's pregnant. Really? Yes. She's always getting pregnant. She never seems to learn. Do you, Albert? She's just careless, I think. Yes, I expect that's what it is. Well, what do you think about my idea? No, I'll take that down below, thank you. I'll have that while I'm shaving, and then we'll scoot off. It'll be fun, won't it? Can we take Albert? Oh, I think not, darling. Not if she's in that condition. I tell you what. We could buy her a beautiful basket to sleep in. Okay? Stay where you are. I'll be right back. Did you hear that, Albert? You're going to get a basket. Three eight by tens and four wild size. How far did we sail last night? So, what's that? Where did we end up? We, we didn't go anywhere. We stayed here all night. You sure? My captain was going someplace all night long. What time is it? It's just coming up to half past ten. Would you like me to organize you some breakfast? No, no, thank you. I think a uh, caffeine injection will do me just fine. Say, are you sure we never went any place last night? Positive. I gotta lay off the juice. Has a thin man surfaced yet? Oh, I think he went into town early with Bridget. By that lousy two-time and limey. Tell me, did uh, Grandma ever tell you anything about me, about uh, how we met and so on? Was that in the war? Yes. How old are you then? Oh, almost 30. Really? Hmm? You were always old then. Hmm. I'm rather bored with this train, aren't you? I wish we could go for a swim. Oh, not today. It's a bit rough. I tell you what, Charlie's a good swimmer. One day you take him for a swim, OK? Oh, yes, I know the place. We are having fun, aren't we? There he is. There's Charlie. Charlie! Charlie! We're back! I really appreciate you waiting for me. Oh, don't be unhappy. I was just trying to be kind. I thought I'd let you sleep on. 
We bought Albert, the present. Albert who? Albert the cat. I'm going to look for Albert. Okay, now don't forget we have to plan our jokes. Why are you so upset, Charlie? What a real think you turned out to be. All that talk last night about we're in this together, Charlie, and two old minds are better than one. You really shot your mouth off. Then the moment my head hits the pillow, you stab me in my back to my face. You're mixing your metaphors. Oh, bull, you know what I'm talking about. From here on in, I'll make the ground rules. All deals are off. It's every man for himself. We'll take turns with the kids. You get it one day, and I get it the next. Here, call it. Head, sales. I get first crack out of them all. Good. Feel better now? Uh -huh. What on earth? Get that get off my deck. Did you eat breakfast this morning? Please, don't mention food to me while we're moving. You know, the worst thing you can do if you're a bad sailor is to stop eating. But you should be all right for a few days because we're going ashore. We're going to stay at the villa. We are? Yes, I suggested it for, for your sake. What's the catch? Oh, there's no catch. Uh, I did it out of the kindness of my heart. It worked. Oh, it did. Oh, good. Um, by the way, I told Charlie about the going ashore. It made him very happy. And he's going to be even happier when he gets to the villa and has lunch, isn't he? Oh, sure. You love the villa, Charlie. There. There it is now. That's it. Oh, it's marvelous. Oh. We have to climb all the way up there? I thought you wanted to be on dry land. Do you good. Work up an appetite. By the time I reach the top, I'll have a nosebleed. Come on, Charlie. You can make it. Oh, Charlie, I'd um, stick to plain food for a while, if I was you. Give the salad and the a miss until you get your land legs back again. What do you suggest? Well, you need protein. I'd um, have a bash at the ham and eggs. I'll get them for you, Charlie. You make me feel like an invalid. Oh, nonsense. We have to take care of you, don't we, darling? Yes, we have to take care of you. What did you two do this morning without me? Oh, nothing much. You went shopping for one or two things. Oh, that's right. You bought a basket for the cat. Yeah. Why do you call her Albert? Because she doesn't like to be called George. Ah, this looks good. I think I got a bum fork here. Oh, it's too bad. Yeah, try this one. Oh, my egg's delicious, Bridget. How's yours? Very nice. And you, Charlie? Very well done. Mmm, mmm. Not too much white vitamin. Very acid. How about a nice glass of beer? I'll go for a beer. Dominic, some beer for Mr. Dunbar. Fade in Mind your language, please. We really got the shakes this morning. Oh, my God. 
Don't touch it. Okay, okay. Who put the snake in my loo? A snake? My God, this whole place is alive. Oh, I get it. Oh, Bridget, you little horror. Before you, before you. You've been playing your tricks, haven't you? Thank you. Giving oh. me a heart attack. And Mr. Dunbar, too, no doubt. Come on, Charlie, smile. Where's your sense of humor? Come on, now. You better not. Oh. <laughs> now, that's my sense of humor. <laughs> Do you enjoy playing guessing games? What kind? Well, suppose that way, way back, your grandmother got careless, like Albert, and couldn't make up her mind between two very good-looking tomcats. Forget it. It's a lousy idea playing this game. Let me put it this way. Now that you've met us, do you like Nick? Come see, come sir. What does that mean? It means come see, come sir. Oh, well, well, let's not argue about it. How about me? You're okay. You don't give out very much, do you? Typical broad. Broad? <laughs> I got you that time, didn't I? Yes, broad. Female of the species. That's American. Like this morning, you were a very nice little girl. Last night at dinner, you were a feisty little broad. Very come see, come, come saw. How do you like the accent? Awful. Thank you. I don't know how I let you talk me into this anyway. It combines everything I hate most. Water and fish. By the way, are there any sharks in the sea? Oh, yes. Lots of them. That did it. Let's continue our conversation on a higher level. But we haven't caught Come on. Them. Never mind. Let's go. If you don't like fishing, I could teach you another game. Do you know roulette? I've heard of it. I play roulette. Grandma Ma taught me. No kidding? Yes. She showed me her system. It's a secret. It would have to be. Yeah. Tell me, is this a system for winning, or does it just let you lose a little slower? Oh, no, you always win. Grandma never lost. My God forgive her. You want me to show you? Come on, I'll show you. And he was led away by the hand like the sucker he was. Shall we show Nick, too? He's very religious. He doesn't believe in gambling. You lose, so you double. If I lose, I double. If I win, I subtract. Anyway. Do you mind? This is my day, and it's private. I don't believe what he did to me. Go ahead. Bonjour, madame. You look very comfortable. I don't suppose I could drag you off to the beach. No, I don't think so. I've stayed off Le Jolie Plage since they went topless. Don't you approve? <laughs> it's not a question of approval. If you can't lick them, don't join them. That's my motto. But you go. Treat yourself. Jog the old memory. Are you sure you didn't tell Nick about this? Were you fat when you knew Grandma? Fat? You think I'm fat? It's not really fat. Just that I'm well covered. A lot of women like that. You know something? You're a real Indian giver. You give it out with one hand, you take it back with the other. Now, you want to hear my plan? I think we ought to go into town and try this out. Now then, you can't get into the casino because they suspect you. You look like a high roller. So you can wait outside, I'll buy you an ice cream. Nick bought me one this morning. All right, I'll set you up with a double chocolate milkshake with all the trimmings. And naturally, I'll cut you in on a piece of the action. How much? 10%. 30. 15. 25. Or I'll tell Nick. That's what I said, 25. Oh, I think about it. I'm sure you were going to be incompatible. Yeah, that's exactly what 
exactly. We were totally incompatible. I mean, that's why we stayed together for three whole years. Kind of like it was such a challenge for two people who really turned each other off. How fascinating. I, I've never tried it myself, but uh, I can see how it would be a, a challenge. <laughs> There's one thing I know how to do. It's get respect. You know, some girls, they let themselves be so used. You know what I mean? Did you know that in 1973 I was voted the prettiest girl in Dwight D. Eisenhower High? <laughs> I can believe that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there was this English professor. I mean, he was really a considerable human being. In fact, I think he was related to your own very gracious royal family. Or maybe, maybe it was Parliament, something like that. Anyway, he was very attracted to me, very prepared to make sexual advances to me. And I could have gotten really good grades, but I held off and he respected me. All credit to him. <laughs> and then I was offered this top contract to do modeling because of my body, you know? And believe me, I don't have any hang-ups about my body. But this top photographer, he just freaked out. He threw his whole Hasselblad outfit right out of the 17-story window, all because I wouldn't let him photograph me au naturel. But he respected me. You're very high in respect. I can see that. <laughs> and then there was this actor. I mean, he was really well-known, like a household name. He's really into himself, too. I mean, he liked going with overhead mirrors, you know what I mean? I find I don't relate to that kind of show business person. No, why not? I don't know why. I've thought a lot about it. But it's kind of like they're not really that deep down dedicated, you know what I mean? Do you relate to them? No, not really. Uh, hey, let's get a garçon. God! Don't look around. What's the matter? I've just got a little headache. I think it's the touch of the sun. Oh, hey, I give really great head massage. You want me to work on it? No, it'll go in a minute, I'm sure. Oh, wait, I got these great purple jobs. My mom says, one thing she always says, Sable, we'll never go out without your pills. <laughs> Let's get some water. Garcon? Oh, don't look around. What is the matter? Just uh, somebody there. I don't want to talk to him. My God, you're really authoritative. <laughs> but you're too late. I think they already saw you. Who? Them. Hi, Nick. Just the man I wanted to see. And I'm going to be really very generous and let you look after Bridget while I tend to a little business. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself. My name is Charlie Dunbar. I happen to be Nick's oldest friend. This is Sable. Sable, huh? Glad to meet you, Sable. And this is Bridget. Bridget is probably my granddaughter. Then again, she could be Nick's granddaughter. At any rate, we're really very old friends. That's very heavy. You don't know how heavy. Well, so long, Nick. Good to have you on the team, Sable. Goodbye, Bridget. My mom had something going with the furrier. He promised her anything and gave her me. Am I in the way? No, darling, of course not. Were you going to have an affair with her if I had to have come along? <sighs> That's really cute. Sable and I were just having a little talk about things we had in common. Is she another one of your grandchildren, then? Bridget, this is not a line of questioning I wish to pursue. I just like to know, so I don't make any faux pas. Oh, do you speak French? I speak four languages. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to go to the John. Do you know where it is? Can Sable go with me? Yeah, sure. Come on, honey. Hey, you okay, honey? Yeah, fine. Say, excuse me for asking, but, um, are those two guys really your grandfathers? No, they just say that. I figured as much. What's their scene, then? They just happen to be guests on my yacht and at my villa. Your yacht? You got a yacht? Yes. You're putting me on. Come on. <laughs> hey, no, listen, I believe you. You say you got a yacht, you got a yacht. Every kid should have a yacht. That's what made America great. Anyway, tell me more about those two guys. What do you know about Bochest out there, the one who picked me up? Oh, um, he's very rich. If he likes you, he gives you wonderful presents. He does? Absolutely. Diamonds, cars, anything. He's that rich, huh? Stinky. Come on. How old you coke? But Charlie promised me a milkshake. Oh, Charlie ratted on you. 
Okay. What flavor do you want? Banana. Double milkshake banana for la petite on Cori Capoma. Bridget was telling me all about her yacht and her, her villa. <laughs> I've invited her for dinner. Oh, wonderful, Bridget. Wasn't that just darling of her? <laughs> She's also been telling me lots of juicy gossip about you. <laughs> Not that I needed to be told. I mean, well, I knew you weren't beach people the moment that you spoke to me. What did he say when he picked you up? <clears throat> well, he didn't exactly pick me up. Honey. You said he did. Oh, she's got it all wrong. What I meant, Bridget, was that... <clears throat> well, I, I recognized a, a fellow human being who was... just lonely, like me. He isn't lonely. He's got me, and Anson, and Charlie. Bridget, you mustn't pick up on every word. You see, I was... I was drawn to your nice friend. Because, well, he... He didn't step on the sandcastles. He walked around them, and I thought that was very dear and very civilized. You know what they say, a second on the lips, an inch on the hips. What it is to be young. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, that wasn't meant for you. Don't think that. I mean, oh, I don't think you look your age at all. I just love that mustache. It's so oh, masculine. Are you two going to fall in love? Because I've never seen that close to, and it really interests me. A girl at my school fell in love, but they expelled her before I could find out what happened. Bridget, just wrap your laughing gear around that, please. Am I embarrassing you? Yes, and Sable. I doubt that. You could have fooled me. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Come on, Sable. I'll show you my bed. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> See you later, Nikki. Yeah, fine. Oh. Huh? Nikki, is it? Yes, and I'm <clears throat> I'm afraid we've got it for dinner. What? Bridget's invitation, not mine. Where did you find that? Or did it find you? Oh, Alison P, don't give me a hard time. I need a drink. Well, it's the sun over the yard arm. Do we care? No, no, not remotely, but it does look better. Come on, tell me the whole sordid story. Well, <coughs> was Bridget with you? No, no, not the beginning. No. Oh boy, Bridget, this is really something. Tell me something. Is Nikki married? Huh? Is Nikki married? Well. Not right now. He's in between. He'd marry Anson except for one thing. What's that? Well, you see, she hates children and he's desperate to have a family. Is that why he pretends to be your grandfather? I guess so. But I suppose he's left us a bit late in the day. What about the other guy? Charlie? Yeah. Well, he's richer than Nick, but he gambles it all away. They both really need a woman to take care of them. <gasps> Yeah, I can see that. How come you know them? They were just friends of the family on my mother's side. Listen, if you want to have a bath before dinner, go right ahead. Use anything you want. Oh, Bridget, thanks. Boy, did I get lucky today. <laughs> Another question. I know I've asked you before, but how do you think I'm doing? What, in the fur trade or with Bridget? No, with Bridget. Would you want it pear-shaped, expurgated, or in the style of Dear Abby? Just level with. Well, from where I'm sitting, you two would have difficulty raising a potted plant, let alone our Bridget. Oh, I see. Well, I just thought that... Of course, I can't speak for Charlie, but... I had the feeling that I was making some progress. Why should you want to make progress? Most men of your mature years are fighting paternity suits, not rooting for them. So why blot an unblemished career? Well, I suppose it's in spite of everything, she's um, beginning to get to me. Why were you both whispering? We weren't whispering. What were you both saying then? Well, actually, I was saying what a polite and endearing little girl you are who never interrupts other people when they're having a social drink. You weren't saying that. You were telling him secrets. How did you guess? Well, what's your problem? Why aren't you looking after your guest? She's fixing her face. Oh, why don't you give yours the one, so It looks as though it could do with it. Go on. Let me and Mr. Cartland prepare ourselves for the world to come. Why can't I stay and listen? 
Because we don't want you to. This is the happy hour. Off you go. Oh, the tragic mask. Oh, no, no, not really. Bridget and I understand each other. Kids like to know where they stand. They don't want any of this, you know, let's be buddies garbage, despite what all the books say. Kids want order in their lives. Order and consistency. And that's what Bridget gets from me. I'm either consistently nice or consistently horrible. <laughs> Bone to pick with you, young lady. Come back here. You and I have got to have a straight talk. Bridget! Come back here. Bridget, you can't hide from me because I'll find you. I'm a human bloodhound. Bridget! All right, I'm not falling for that old gang. You coming out or do I come in? What? Who's that? You know who it is and you know what I want. And you're going to get a good spanking. <laughs> Mr. Dunbar! Oh, my God. Ah! My goodness, it can't be Bridget. Oh, oh my God. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, lady. My mistake. What have I done? I didn't see anything on it. It was a mistake. It was money. It was a mistake, really. Uh, uh, how was I to know she was in the tub? Who? Uh, the, uh, what's her name? The, uh, the broad you picked up at the beach. You mean you burst in while she was taking a bath? Well, like I said, it was a mistake. You're disgusting, Jim. I was looking for Bridget. Then you're a disgusting, dirty old man. I didn't even know she was in the house. That's no excuse. I'm innocent, I tell you. They all say that. Is she going to prefer charges? Why is everybody ganging up on me? I made a mistake, that's all. You and I are going to have a little chat. I'm not having that child exposed to your degeneracy. There's nothing to discuss. An experience like that could wreck her whole life. Come with me. Oh, no, what? I suppose the next thing you're going to do is call a cop. Okay, okay, you don't believe me, so I'll, I'll admit everything. I came back from the casino, cleaned out after having played Bridget's secret system. Then I walked straight into that bathroom, intending to remake Psycho. Does that satisfy you? What do you mean you were cleaned out? That's what I said, cleaned out. You went gambling? Yeah. What is this, confession time with the Salvation Army? Yes, I went gambling. I played roulette like somebody out of a Russian novel. The kid gave me a bump stare. How much you lose? What? You heard how much. I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that it might incriminate me. No, Charles, you're not in your sick, you're senile. Oh, listen to who's talking. Some guys blow their stack on hysterical women. I happen to blow it on roulette. Now, let's have the closing hymn and a bowl of soup, and we'll all kneel in prayer. I'm praying for you, Charlie. Well, start praying for yourself, because I'm leaving the field. From here on in, she's all yours. Who are we talking about? The kid, your grandchild, little Miss Dillinger, the whole smear. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're in this together, remember? Well, I've resigned. I, I want out. You're not any sick and senile. You're chicken! Thank you. That's nice. Kick me while I'm down. Grind me into the hill of your shoe. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Well, Charlie, go on like that. You'll have a heart attack. Heart attack? I had a whole bunch of heart attacks at the lousy roulette table. So why do I need your grandchild? Who says she's mine? Any kid that'll do that to me has got to be yours. Don't you want to talk about it? No! Look it up and spot! Evening, Anderson. Evening, Mr. Cartland. Well, that was an exciting little interlude. How is the sex maniac? Very scratchy. Is he liable to strike again, or was that just a one-off? Have you started? I, I haven't stopped. I figured I might need it this evening. Yes, you may be right. Can I? Oh, yes, do. Where's uh, Goldilocks? Who knows? <laughs> Remember what I said, now that you got it. Flaunt it. What have we got here, the Dolly sisters? Doesn't she look cute? I did her face for. You amaze me. I thought it was all natural. How old do you think I look? A very old ten. Bridget, come and sit down before you fall down. Perhaps you'd like to sit next to Nikki, Sable. Oh, sure. Do 
Do you wish to start dinner, Miss Addison? Oh, why not? Oh, boy, this is a real thrill for me. Oh, wait a minute, where's Charlie? Oh, that's right, Charlie's not here. Oh, why don't we start? He'll turn up if he wants to. I'm starving. Yes, well, very well. Well, we'll start. What are we having? A uh, chicken a la mode with fresh asparagus. Oh, well, we'll go ahead. Would you keep Mr. Dunbar's warm? Is chicken on his allergy list? He's allergic to everything tonight. But gee, I hope that's not my fault. Oh, no, it's just that uh, men his age have nothing to compare it to, you see. Well, he didn't see anything. I mean, my body was fully covered. Well, that's what he was comparing. He was trying to remember what it was he didn't see. Oh, I feel so responsible. Should I go look for him? No, no, I wouldn't. Merci, Julie. I hope you like chicken, Sable. Oh, I love it. It's my favorite dish. <laughs> You know, I've been thinking, I don't think I'm dressed quite proper for tonight's occasion. Oh, I think it looks lovely. Is it your school uniform? Are you here on vacation, um, Sable? Yes, sort of. See, I, uh, I want to see the world before I settle down. I've got this terrific job lined up back home. What's that? I'm an apprentice embalmer. What's an embalmer? Please, please don't, don't tell her. Not, not before the chicken. They use the same techniques, you know. Who do? Well, hopefully not on these French chickens, but uh, back home in those monstrous battery chicken farms, they inject them with steroids. Makes them run faster, does it? No, no. It plumps them up. Did you know that those birds put on an average of seven ounces after death? No, I had no idea. Ah, Bluebeard lives. Charlie, what's an embalmer? Somebody I'm going to need very shortly. What's this? Not fish, is it? No, it's uh, uh, chicken. Chicken Lazarus, Charlie. You'll love it. What's she done to her face? Sable made me up. Practicing her future craft. Charlie, you missed the most fascinating conversation. Sable was telling us how they train American chickens to run the 400 yards hurdle. If you're going to continue this, I'm going to eat mine in my room. Well, I don't like what she's done to her face. Kids should look like kids. Well, I like it. Makes me look grown up. Why do you want to look grown up? It's no big deal being grown up, believe me. Because nobody takes any notice of you until you wear makeup. Best of three falls, Charlie. Well, if you were my granddaughter, I'd make you wipe it off. Well, I'm not, and I'm glad. Charlie and I agree for once. I'd do the same. That's because you're cruddy. Cruddy? Yes, cruddy. All right, Bridget, we heard you first time. Gee, I seem to have started something here tonight. You certainly have. Well, the milk of human kindness is really flowing from you two tonight. If you want to keep your milk sweet, leave it in the cow. If we're trading proverbs, I've got one for you. God gives the nuts, but he doesn't crack them. Oh, that's cute. I, I like that one. You would. I like to tell you what my grandma told me. She said, all birds are hard to pluck. And you're, you're both all birds, and they should inject you like that stuff that Sable said. And you're both horrible, and I don't care. Thank you, gentlemen. Next time, why don't you lay it on with a trowel? Awful. I feel so responsible. Well, you should. First of all, I'm practically on a rape charge on account of you. Then you make the kid up to look like Bella Lugosi. I've met your type before. You prey on defenseless guys like Nick and me just for what you can get. Well, I wouldn't take your picture if you paid me. What are you talking about? Why would you take my picture anyway? Because I'm a photographer, that's why. You're a photographer? Is he putting me on? He's not only a photographer, he's an unsuccessful photographer. You mean you're not loaded? All I'm loaded with is Fuji color. Who said I was loaded? Bridget did. She said you were a millionaire. She said you both were. How do you like that? Now I know why I never got married. I am in shock. I am in total shock. This whole experience. Oh, what are you getting so excited about? Do you realize we've been set up like a couple of patsies? She would have taken us for everything we've got if we had it. Oh, don't flatter yourselves. I'm into embalming, not necrophilia. I got my respect. And let me tell you something else. I feel real sorry for that kid having to be around you two assholes. Because she deserves something better. She does. You were two of the world's all-time great chickens, like she said. And I hope she buries you under AstroTurf because you are degenerate and not very dedicated. And screw you! I thought she'd never leave. We've got to decide about the kid. I thought we decided before dinner you... You want it out? Well, now it's after dinner, and don't be so stiff upper lip. I was hasty, and I was wrong. 
And unlike some people, I'm prepared to eat crow. Like... Charlie, may I say something in all sincerity? Go ahead. I've never liked you, Charlie. Now, there's nothing personal, you understand. It's just that your whole character, the way you dress, the way you talk, has always grated on me. But you've just turned all that upside down. What did I do? <laughs> you've just put into words, golden words, how I feel. Instead of thinking of that poor, motherless, fatherless little child, I've been thinking only of England souffle of salt. I'm rotten, Charlie. I'm rotten to the core. No, 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 no. I am. Mark you. You're fairly rotten. But you're not nearly as rotten as I am. Deep down, Charlie, you're a brick. What? A brick. You're a prince, Charlie, a prince. Oh, you don't have to say that. I know I don't have to say it. I want to say it. You're, a, you're a prince. And I'm... I'm depraved. I never should have let, uh, what was her name? Uh, Mabel. Thank you, Mabel. I never should have let Mabel come into contact with that innocent little child. Well, hell, you're only flesh and blood, old buddy. You couldn't help yourself. <laughs> well, I should have tried. From now on, Charlie, I'm going to make amends. I'm going to live up to your standards. Hey, I've got the answer. You have? We'll make it easy on the kid. We don't give her a choice. I'm talking about a symbolic gesture. A once and for all. For the sake of the kid. Right. Got it. You're on. Don't go away. Where am I going? <laughs> well, uh, the building hasn't settled. Charlie, with what I have here, we're going to settle this whole thing like officers and gentlemen. I only made PFC. Oh. Well, never mind. My is your one of the regiment. Thank you, sir. Choose your weapon, sir. Oh. Clever. Where'd you get them? Charlie, I wasn't always a souffle of song. I once worked in the circus. Oh, I wish I'd seen it. I wish anyone had seen it. Are we going to do it here? No. Oh, no. Come with me, Charlie. We don't want to get blood on the carpet. What do you think? We're going out into the garden. We're going to do it in the fresh air. Lovely. <laughs> Shouldn't we be facing the other way? You've done this before. All right, turn around. On the signal, go. Six paces, turn, fire. Ready? No hard feelings? None whatsoever, cock. What? Cock. On your marks, set yet, go.
Charlie? 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 Are you all right? All right. Don't go away. Charlie? I'm going to give you... I'll give you the kiss of life. Oh, no, you, you'll have to die. I thought children behaved badly enough. Look at both of you. What on earth were you doing last night? Oh, well, you end up looking like Quasimodo, and Charlie here's got the mark of Zorro on his forehead. Well, don't rub it in. What is that on your forehead, Charlie? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. So could you do something about my neck? The coffee keeps falling out of the side of my face. If you were Bridget's age, I'd smack you. Now don't break anything. Lunatics, both of them. Ah, oh. Look, I can't do it if you tense up. Right? Now just touch up. Now, I tell you what you're both going to do. You're going to make it up to Bridget for last night. You're going to take her onto the beach and you're going to give her a really nice day. You could do with some sun on this neck and you can go for a swim, Charlie. It'll sober you up. I don't know how to swim. Then paddle. If you want to get the affection of that child, you better stop feeling sorry for yourself and start thinking about her. Now, relax, Mr. Cartland. Ah! Better? Beach is with you. To say nothing of the Save the Whales campaign. See, it's quite safe. Now don't, don't, Come on. don't splash. That's far enough. No, you have to come in further. So you can float. Now just let me, let me do it my way. I just, I just like to take it very slow and easy. Just be patient. Oh! 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 Baby, I'm going. Don't let go. You can't think, Charlie. Where are the people on the beach? Huh? Let everybody go. There, over there. Breathe. Stop, that you're swimming. I am. Sure. They're going to learn very quickly. Come on in for an ice cream, please, Charlie. Yeah, why not? Do you want one, too? Yeah, I'm going to have chocolate chip. If they don't have that, give me a double strawberry. Try and get Nicky one. You think he deserves one? He didn't go swimming, remember? I'll get him one too. Yeah, I could be a, another regular Mark Spitz if I stuck to it. <laughs> Bridget thought I did pretty good today too. You know, she's not a bad kid. You just have to get to know her. You know something? What? We're back to square one. You're right. Last night proved nothing except we can't make up our own minds. You know, funny thing. She sort of came on differently today. You know, not, not like she was trying to score. Like when she was teaching me how to swim. She sort of enjoyed it. She was looking after you. Well, gave me a funny feeling, too. You know, maybe we expected too much of her. Well, what did we know? She looked sweet today, didn't she? Yeah. Behaved like a normal little girl. <laughs> oh, I think kids need a little time to get used to people. <laughs> Don't we all? And we're not exactly people. No. She's got a lot of good qualities. She's got a little of you, a little of me, and a lot of Janine. Yeah. Boy, did I see Janine and her today. I wonder what everybody's looking at. Where? I don't know. Something's going on up there on the road. Let's have a look. 
Somebody say kids being run over? Thanks, so. What? What's the latest? Nothing yet. She's still in the operating room. It's my fault. No, it wasn't. We were both to blame. We let her go for an ice cream and she must have run straight across the road. Yes, it's our fault. We should have taken more care. You can't watch them all the time. Children just don't think. Yeah, come sit down. Tell you anything. Well, I guess we'll just have to hang in and wait. Which one of you is Mr. Dumber, please? Me. I am. I think we're very lucky. Your blood group matches. It does? Yes, fortunately, because your group is very rare with the little girl. Can you follow me, please? Yeah. Are you related by any chance? Uh, sort of. Well, that's a break. You're not supposed to smoke in here. That's the least of my worries. What time have you got? 11.30. They said two hours, but nearly three. No news is good news. Well, there's danger. Nous devons la garder encore quelque temps en observation. Oh, thank God. What she say? It's okay. She's out of danger. Can we see her? Put on la voir. Ah non, pas maintenant. Elle n'est pas encore revenue à elle. Bon, écoutez-moi. Vous ne pouvez plus rien faire ici. Vous devriez rentrer et vous reposer. Oui, je comprends. She says that everything is fine. She's not come round yet, but she says that why don't we all go home and come back and see her in the morning? Uh, Madame, merci mille fois. Et surtout, n'oubliez pas de remercier le, le surgeon de notre part. <laughs> Pas du tout. C'est tout à fait naturel. Au revoir et soyez tranquille. Merci, merci. Well, you two go back. I'll stay. Oh, no. You stay. We all oh, stay. That's stupid. I'm used to it. Now, you go on. You just do as you're told. You both look like ghosts. I'll ring the villa if there's any change. You can be back here in minutes. You sure that's okay? I am positive. Florence Nightingale was a woman, remember? Thank you, Anderson. Yes, you've been terrific. But go on, or I'll burst into tears and ruin my reputation. She's yours, Charlie. No. Yeah, she's yours. In eight out of ten clinical tests, they say in the ads. I really cared, didn't you? I couldn't have taken it if that little monster had 
died on us. Certainly straightened out a lot of things. You know, it's a terrible thing to say, but it takes something like that to make you see the light. Yes, well, let's not make a pudding out of it. <clears throat> I'll stick around until we're absolutely certain she's on the mend, and then I'll get out of everybody's hair. Who knows? By the end of the summer, you might have learned to swim. Who's arrived? Nobody. That's mine. I ordered it. I'm not coming to the hospital, Charlie. I, I, I hate goodbye scenes. So, just give her my love and uh, give her these things, too. You really think that's best? I know it is, yeah. And uh, you look after her now. And wish she'd better take one of your lousy snapshots and send it to me. Huh? Almost enough with Charlie. Okay, Nick. If that's what you want. Goodbye, Dominic. Goodbye, sir. And forgive me for mentioning it, but actually, my name's Derek. Oh, I am sorry, Derek. Well, you can't win them all. I'm here for the season and high as a kite. <laughs> Living in error is more than cafe. Good night. Everyone's here and rightly gay. Nobody cares what people say. Though the Riviera seems really much queerer than Rome at its height. Yesterday night. Yesterday night. Yesterday night, I've been to a marvelous party. I don't believe it. That was me, Capping. I can believe that. What a lousy grandfather you turned out to be. Don't blame me, Nick. She made me find you. She calls you sacks, as you know. Yes. I bribed him. I gave him my secret poker system. And he fell for it, but that figures. When I woke up in the hospital, you weren't there. You, you went away. Why did you go away? Well, I had to get back to work. I didn't want to disappoint my fans. As you can hear, they're getting quite restless now. Sit down. Okay, Bridget, you just blew it again. Well, even if that doesn't happen, you can still come back. Don't you want to come back? Yes, of course I do. Well, I couldn't give up show business. But I love you. I love you. But you see, it's not just a question of loving. Now, this is hard for you to understand, but... Charlie and I had to choose. That's what your grandma wanted. I know. Charlie told me all that. And I told him I thought that was really unfair and tacky of grandma because she never chose between you, so I'm not going to either. Tell him what we decided, Charlie. We decided to make you an offer you couldn't refuse. We thought we'd retire the souffle and keep the song. I, I hate to admit it, but even with Jack Daniels, life just isn't the same without you. And I never thought I'd get that out. So you see, it's all fit. Except gracefully. It's very becoming in a man. Well. You will? It doesn't look as I've got much choice, does it? But if I say yes, you'll promise me one thing. Don't grow up too quickly. I promise. I'll drink to that. <laughs> 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 
there's a time to care so late in summer when the bloom of summer has gone the jingle jangle of a carousel the sparkle spangle of a wishing well are from the theme of a dream that I've never known. There's a time to care, to wait and wonder why I fall Precious schemes touched my dreams, my sleeping love awakened. Now we share, now we're there in a time to care, time to care. Time to care. Time to care.